Welcome to Shakespeare FC, The Words, a five-minute journey into the individual bits of language that were forged, fletched, hewn, and hammered, and sometimes crowbarred, into existence by our brilliant and witty Warwickshirian wordsmith, or, as you become more familiar, Uncle Will. I'm your host, Kari Marshall. As we continue our foray into the specific words conjured into existence by William, I have to ask, is everything all right? You seem a bit, I don't know, not your usual sparky self. Or, as Captain Malcolm Reynolds would say, shiny. I wish there was a word for it. Oh, wait. Uncle Will was not in a completely avant-garde mood when he not so much plucked lackluster from his noodle noggin, so much as introduced Signora Lux, meaning light in the Latin, to the somewhat ne'er-do-well proto-Germanic, neither hair nor fraulein, how fluid, laca, meaning deficiency or want. But in a sparkling debut together, Uncle Will ushered lackluster into the Forest of Arden in Act Two of his 1599 comedy, As You Like It. And I do. The play so far. Duke Frederick usurps his brother, Duke Signor, who flees to the Forest of Arden. Duke Signor's daughter, Rosalind, remains at court with her cousin Celia, until Frederick banishes her as well. Rosalind, disguised as a boy named Ganymede, don't worry, none of this will be on the test, and Celia seek refuge in the forest. Orlando, who is also fleeing his tyrannical brother Oliver, heads to the forest as well, after falling in love with Rosalind where he is stumbled upon by Jaques, one of the followers of Duke Signor, who has made a pastoral life, very Thoreau-like, embracing a rustic woodland exile. Jaques relays his encounter with the starving and weary Orlando, dressed as a jester or fool, to the rest of his forest fellows upon his return to camp. What? You look merrily. <laughs> a fool, a fool. I met a fool in the forest, a motley fool, a miserable world. As I do live by food, I met a fool who laid him down and basked him in the sun and railed on Lady Fortune in good terms, in good set terms, and yet a motley fool. Good morrow, fool, quoth I. No, sir, quoth he. Call me not fool till heaven hath sent me fortune. <laughs> and then... He drew a dial from his poke, and looking on it with lackluster eye, says very wisely, It is ten o'clock. Funny thing about this is that Jaques describes the starving and weary Orlando using the word lackluster when he looks upon his sundial to relay the time. Though, quick tangent, pocket watches had been invented some eighty years previous by Bavarian clockmeister Peter Henlein, They were not readily available to the English masses for quite a while. But Jaques is famously known as one of Shakespeare's more melancholic, less shiny characters, perhaps only outdone by the pouty, wistful, and whinging Dane, always harping on the darker aspects of life. So Uncle Will certainly dipped his quill deep into the inkwell of irony when he recounts Orlando's eyes as being lackluster as he looked for the time upon his sundial. But without lackluster, novelists from Aldous Huxley to F. Scott Fitzgerald would have had to pull out their thesauruses. Or is it thesauri? Also, whatever would we do when we needed to talk about employment? If you're having a regret about staying in a lackluster job and not following your passion, you are not alone. That's nice to know. And not to mention the conundrum that would have faced the casting director of Saving Private Ryan when she was forced to describe my audition. Well, alas and alack, my friends, that is all we have time for. Join us again next time for another hopefully informative journey into the mind of Uncle William. I'm Kari Marshall. Farewell until next time. Shakespeare FC is a production of WGTE Public Media and is sponsored in part by a generous donation from the Cowie Family Fund. All previous episodes are available at wgte.org slash sfc or wherever you get your podcasts.